Okay, again, welcome to Mathematical Structure for Computer Science, CS113, also known as Discrete Mathematics. In this lecture, so we're going to continue with the Boolean algebra, and we are going to cover logic gates. So our main objective is to cover what is a logic gate, also combination of gates, and also example of circuits. Normally, a circuit consists of gates, logic gates. We have two types of circuits in computer science. We have the combinational circuits, which normally consists of only logic gates. So the data cannot be stored. And also we have a sequential circuit, which we are not going to cover here. Normally that topic will be covered in a computer architectural class. But again, in combinational circuit, we have only logic gates, there's no memory. But with sequential circuit, we have the logic gate and also we have a memory. So this means we can store previous data or information uh, to be used in the future for again, performing any tax. So again, in this lectures, we're going to discuss about logic gates. So here we say we construct circuits using gates, either combinational circuit or sequential circuit. We always need logic gates, especially processes. Uh, for example, a CPU circuit normally consists of billions of logic gates, and each logic gate performs a specific again task. And we can combine two or more logic gates to produce or to perform a specific tax also. So here we construct circuit using gates, which take an input. So every gate takes an input, and the input can be one input or two or more inputs. So here we, we said which takes as input the value of two or more Boolean variables and produce one or more bits as output. Inverters normally takes only one input. We discuss about complement. Complement of zero is one, one is zero, or true is false, false is true. We also discuss about a product, Boolean product operator. In logic gates, a product operator will be the end gate, which we have right here, end gate. So for example, if I have input of two, x and y two variables the output will be x times y so n gate is product or s product y now with the all gate is addition addition so if i have input of s and y the output will be s plus y so log, uh, all gate normally represent a key addition operation. Then we have the NOT gate, which is the inverter. So if I have X and it goes through a NOT gate, it will be X invert or complement of X. So for now, we're going to discuss about the, these three basic gates, the end gate, OR gate, and inverter. So here also we said, uh, we the input here is one for NOT gate, not get is normally a unary, we say it's a unary circuit or operator, mm -hmm. not. All gate is binary. We need a minimum of two inputs. And it can be more than two, but minimum of two. And gate, and gate also the same, minimum of two inputs. So for example, here we have a end gate. The input can be as many as we want. So here we have input from S1 to Sn. It can be 10, 20, any amount. And also here we have all gate and we say S1 plus S2 plus period, period, period plus SN, which means again, the input can be as many as we want. So combination of circuit or combinational circuit consists of combination of gates. So for example, this circuit here, it takes two inputs x and y variable, and the output will be s y plus s invert y. So the function of this gate is taking two input of s y 
and the output will be SY plus S invert Y. So in order to accomplish this, we need four gates. So first we have to input SY to go through the end gate to get SY or S times Y. Then we need S invert. So we let S go through the not gate to be inverted. So the output of not X will be X invert. Then X invert and Y will go through end gate. So it will be another product of S invert times Y. Now we have those two input, X, Y, and S invert times Y going through all gates. So it will be addition of S, Y, and S invert Y. So our output will be S, Y plus S invert Y. And the second one also we have input of S and Y again. And also we are using the same input of S and Y, but we invert the S to get S invert. Then we get S invert Y plus S Y. So, so these two circuits again, they are the same. The difference that you can see here how we tap the input of S Y. That's the difference. So here again, we have an example here. They say we should construct a circuit that produce this output. So I need a circuit that will give me S plus Y times S invert. So when I look at this circuit uh, expression, I know I will need two gates. For addition, I need the OR gate. For multiplication, I need the end gate. But the X is also inverted. So that means I will need one more gate and not gate. So the input here will be, I have S, Y that will go through OR gate to get a plus. Then the output of S plus Y S will go through the NOT gate to give us S invert. So now we get S invert with S plus Y, which will go through N gate because it's multiplication. So we can see the circuit here. Again, this question says so we should construct the circuit. An expression is given. So here we can see S, Y go through all gate, we get S plus Y. Now S go through NOT gate, we get S invert. And our final expression is S invert times S plus Y. So they have to go through end gate to get the product the times. So you get S invert times S plus Y. Now question two, B, we have S invert times S plus Z invert or invert. So this means I'll get the input of X through not gate and I'll get S invert. That's what we have here, S invert. Then next I have Y plus Z, but Z is invert. So I'll let Z go through not gate. Then when I get Z invert with Y, they will go through all gate because it's plus all gate. So that'll give me Y plus Z invert. Now, after that, I want to invert everything. So the output also will go through not gate again. So I will get Y plus Z invert or invert. And now that is multiplied by S invert. So the S invert we have here, we go through N gate to get the multiplication. Then S Y plus Z invert or invert will go through the N gate. So we product the two. So our final solution will be S invert times Y plus Z invert or invert. Now let's try the last one, which is the C. Here we have three input, S plus Y plus Z. So this means three input going through all gates. So that's what we have here. S, Y, Z go through all gates. The output will be S plus Y plus Z. Then we have X invert, Y invert, Z invert. They all should go through N gate because they are multiplied. So here you can see that we invert the X, Y, and Z, and the three input went through N gate, and we get S invert, Y invert, Z invert. So now we have the X invert, Y invert, Z invert, and also we have S plus Y plus Z. They are multiplying, so we need N gate. So when we get the end gate here, we bring S plus Y plus Z as input times S invert, Y invert, Z invert. 
and that will be our again final solution for the circuit. So we also have what we call the hardest. Uh, hardest circuit normal we use it to add two or three uh, values together, and this would be a binary operation. So here we say logic circuit can be used to add two positive integer from their binary expansions. The first step is to build a half harder that will have two bits by which does not accept a carry from the previous addition. Since the circuit has more than one output, it is multiple output circuit. So here you can see that we want to have two values. So we have X and Y go through the all gates. So we get X plus Y. Then we have X and Y go through the end gate, we get S invert, I mean, sorry, we get S and Y. Then S and Y will go through the not gate to get S, Y invert. So now S, Y invert plus S plus Y will go through end gate, so it will be multiplication. So we get S, Y invert times S plus Y. Then we also have a carry, which is the same S, Y, and it will be carry S, Y. And now we go through some Boolean algebra again. So we, we said axioms and theorems to simplify Boolean equation. Like regular algebra, but simpler variables have only two values, zero and one. This is binary operations. So the possible values for all the variables are either zero or one. Also, we have the duality in axiom and, the and theorems. Duality go with the Morgan's, the Morgan's theorem. Whereby if I have x, y is the same as s invert plus y invert. So these are the Boolean identity, and I think we went through this in our previous slide. So let's say, for example, if I have b and b is 0, if b is not 1, because only two options we have. And also if b is 1, it can be one if only B is not zero. Then the next one is the invert, which we call the not also. Zero invert is one, one invert is zero. Then we have the N and all operations. The N is multiplication, the whole is addition. So zero times zero is zero, one times one is one, zero times one is zero, and one times zero also is zero. But with the or, we know that one invert, this is for not one plus one is what one. Zero plus zero is what zero. One plus zero also is what zero. Zero plus one also, also uh, here one plus zero, we give us one. Then also zero plus one is also one. So one plus zero is the same as zero plus one, which is one. And that's for all. Multiplication, it will be zero. Zero times one is zero, one times zero stays zero. Then we have the identity. B times one is B, but B plus zero is also B. B times zero is zero, but B plus one will be one. Because it doesn't matter the value of B. If B is zero, zero plus one is one. If B is one, one plus one is one. So B plus one is always one. Then B times B will be BB, but BB is the same as B. Then B plus B also the same B. Now, if we have invert and one term, let's B times B invert, they will cancel each other. So if B is one, invert will be zero. If B is zero, the invert will be one. So if you multiply, you get again zero. So B times B invert will give me zero. But B plus B invert is always one. Because if B is one, B invert will be zero. Zero plus one is one. If B is zero, the B invert will be one. Then one plus zero also is still zero. So this is identity to the first one, which again said B times one is B, but B plus zero also is B. 
So here we have B1, the output will be B or B0. Uh, or gate, so addition, the output to be zero also. This is multiplication, so the output to be again. And so B plus zero is always B. And B plus and B times one is always B also. Now B times zero will give me zero. But B plus one will give me one or b plus zero will give me b. Now b times b is b, b plus b is b. So if I have b, b, a, the answer is the same as a, b. And that's what we have here for the logic gate, n gate, b, b will give me b, b, b going through all gate also will give me b. Now B invert and invert. If you have two invert, they will cancel each other. So B invert and invert will be B. So here we have B invert. If B invert go through another not gate, the answer will be B. So here we have B going through first not gate, it become B invert. Now B invert going to another not gate, it will be B invert and invert. So two invert cancel each other. So you get B. And the same thing if you have B times B invert is zero, because if B is one, B invert to be zero. If B is zero, B invert to be one. So B times B invert is always zero. And we said earlier, B plus B invert is always one. And these are the rules again, B times one is B, B times zero is zero, B times B is B, B times B invert is zero because one will be zero, one will be one. But if it's B plus B invert is one, B plus B also will be B. B plus one will be one. And B plus zero will be B. So the Morgan theory said, if I have A, B or invert, it's the same as writing A invert, multiplication invert will be addition. So we get addition plus, then B invert. The same thing if I have A plus B or invert, it will be A invert, B invert, times B invert. Again, here the invert is down, supposed to be up, but down. So this is A plus B or invert will be A invert. Plus invert is multiplication, then B invert will be B invert will be B invert. Now what's the Boolean expression for this circuit? First, we have a b that go through end gate, but when you get to end gate, the circle with o is same as invert. So this means my answer will be a times b invert. The down also will be c times d invert. Then we have a b invert going through end gate with c d invert. So that means we get a b invert times CD invert, and also we have a open circle. So that means it's not so, or invert. So if we have Y is AB plus CD. Now here we say find the output of the given circuit. So here we have X, we get S invert, S invert, through the end gate, we get S invert times Y invert. Now through another node gate, it will be S invert times Y invert or invert, which will be X plus Y. So we can see the output here will be S plus Y, the expression. Because again, we have S invert, we have Y invert, S invert and Y invert going to end gate, it will be S invert times Y invert. Then they'll go through not get so you invert everything. So you get S invert invert, multiplication now become addition, then Y invert another invert. So two invert cancel each other, we get X plus Y. Another exercise here, we should construct circuit again from inverters, end gate or all gate to produce this output. 
I had S invert plus one, plus Y. So this means I need a not gate to go through S to get S invert. Then it will go through all gate with Y. So you can see the answer here. We have we need a not not gate for S to get S invert. Then Y invert and S invert will go through all gate. Then it will be S invert plus Y. The same thing applied to the second one, B, we have S plus Y all inverse. So I'll need two input first, S plus Y, go through the all gate because it's plus. Now, after I get the output, I'm going to invert it. So we use the not gate. Then we get the X. Then we let the S go through the end gate because it will be S plus Y invert times S. Now this invert affects only S plus Y. That's why when we get the S plus Y from the all gate S plus Y, it goes through the invert first before we multiply it to X at the end gate here. Okay, so let's try another example. Same thing, we are going to construct a circuit. We have S, Y, Z plus S invert, Y invert, Z invert. So this means again, S times Y times Z. So I will get three input going through end gate which is right here at the bottom then the next one is s invert y invert z invert so we have the same s y but this time we are going to invert it so we use the not gate and also it's multiplication so it will go through end gate then the output of the two is half plus so we need again the all gate and yeah so this is the all gate uh, that will give me the S, Y, Z coming down here and also S invert, Y invert, Z invert coming up here and they go through all gate to add the two together. Okay, so the next one, so we have S invert plus Z in parentheses, then another Y plus Z invert in parentheses. So this one, when I look here, I will need the two all gate and that's what we have here. And also we have S invert, so we invert S with Z for the first all gate, so we get S invert plus Z at the all gate output. Then the down, we need a Z invert, so Z go to not gate and we get Z invert and Y. So this is the two expression here. Now we need a not gate to invert everything. So here we have inverted everything, then they go through multiplication. So which means the two input will go through end gates to give us S invert plus Z times Y plus Z invert. So again, this will be the conclusion of our logic gates. In this session, we learned about the gates such as end gate which is a product or gate which is addition and also not gate which is a invert or complement and we also saw the example of a no and also none gate none means not end no means not all so it's opposite of all and and so again wish everybody the best and thank you <laughs>